let's see about tuberculosis and its relation with pregnancy so firstly coming to the incidence india accounts for about 30% of all the tuberculosis cases in the world and 30% of all cases and about 1 to 2% of the pregnant women are found to have tuberculosis and the pregnant women with hiv are at increased risk of developing tuberculosis next coming to the effect of pregnancy on pulmonary tuberculosis the recent studies say that the course of pulmonary tuberculosis is unmodified that is it follows the same course as a non pregnant individuals during pregnancy also there's no significant change in the course of tuberculosis in pregnancy so the lesions remain the same the mortality also remains the same as in non pregnant individuals and it also does not increase the risk of relapse of tuberculosis but if the pregnant female is suspected to have multi drug resistant tuberculosis then we advise them and we counsel them for abortions this is because the medications required for treatment of mdr tb can affect the fetus or they can be teratogenic this is why we advise abortion for a pregnant women having multi drug resistant tuberculosis next coming to the effect of tuberculosis on pregnancy the effect depends on the site of tb and the time at which it is diagnosed so the course can vary from mild form of tuberculosis with tb lymphadenitis to even mortality in severe cases so as we have seen already there is no significant change in tuberculosis in case of pregnancy but there is a slight increase in incidence of abortions and premature labor in pregnant women having tuberculosis and rarely the fetus is affected by transplacental passage next the diagnosis of tuberculosis in pregnancy tuberculosis is suspected when the patient presents with the usual symptoms like cough with sputum production hemoptysis evening rise of temperature and weight loss this is the same in case of pregnancy as well as in non pregnant individuals
and suspicion of pregnancy should be when the pregnant woman is having unexplained cough and sputum after diagnosis coming to the investigations to confirm the diagnosis one of the main investigation is chest radiographs that is chest x ray which is more commonly taken so in case of pregnancy the abdomen is shielded to prevent radiation effect on the fetus next we go for sputum examination for acid fast bacilli using zeal nielsen stain at least two samples are taken for examination if one out of two is positive for mycobacterium tuberculosis then the patient is said to be smear positive if the smear is negative but radiologically abnormality is present then we classify them as an active case of pulmonary tuberculosis even though the smear is negative next is management for management in case of active tuberculosis treatment is initiated as soon as it is identified and the drugs used include isoniazid written as h the dose is 5 mg per kg daily rifampicin noted as r which is given 10 mg per kg daily next pyrazinamide written as z given in dose of 15 to 25 mg per kg and ethambutol e given in dose of 5 to 25 mg per kg daily so all these are given daily and along with it we add pyridoxin 50 mg daily this is to reduce the risk of isoniazid induced neuropathy so we add 50 mg of pyridoxin and this therapy is given for 9 months 
along with it there should be monthly maternal monitoring for betterment or deterioration so this should be based on the clinical laboratory and bacteriological investigations also we should do fetal monitoring to diagnose fetal growth restriction also called as intrauterine growth restriction coming to the toxicity isoniazid toxicity causes hepatitis this can be found by increased liver enzymes so the liver enzymes need to be monitored regularly if the levels are increased 5 times than normal then the isoniazid therapy should be discontinued and streptomycin is proved to be teratogenic and so it is contraindicated in pregnancy so the drug streptomycin is contraindicated in pregnancy and also the use of pyrazinamide is limited next let's see about congenital tuberculosis this is usually rare so the congenital tuberculosis occurs when the fetus is affected either hematogenously that is through blood or through the umbilical vein or when there is aspiration of the infected contents at delivery this can lead to congenital tuberculosis which is very rare the criteria for the diagnosis of congenital tuberculosis include first the lesions should be seen in the first week of life next there should be hepatic granulomas seen this granulomas can be primary complex or caseating and next there should be documented tuberculosis infection of the placenta or the endometrium these are the criteria for the diagnosis of congenital tuberculosis some more points to be known are if the mother is having tuberculosis the breastfeeding should not be discontinued she should still continue breastfeeding only if the mother is having mdr tb that is multi drug resistant tuberculosis then we likely separate the infant from the mother because of the risk of transmission 
and also due to lack of effective treatment. Lastly, coming to the neonatal risks and management. The mother, if she is tuberculin positive, tuberculin test positive, but without active tuberculosis disease, then there is no risk for the neonate to develop tuberculosis. But if the pregnant women with active tuberculosis, if she is putum negative, in the last 3 months of gestation, then there is negligible risk for the infant to get tuberculosis. Whereas, if the pregnant woman is putum positive, then the neonate should be evaluated for active tuberculosis. If there is no active tuberculosis, then even then it should receive isoniazid prophylaxis for 3 months until the mother becomes putum negative. So, the prophylaxis in the neonate is isoniazid given for 3 months. Overall, some of the key points to be known are, it is important to make an early diagnosis and to start treatment early to decrease the morbidity and mortality to both the mother and the fetus and all the high risk patients which include women with HIV and those in contact with patients having active tuberculosis, they should be screened during pregnancy even though they do not have any symptoms for tuberculosis. So, this is all about tuberculosis and pregnancy. Thank you.